Hello everybody and welcome to this week's episode of Jing TV. Today we're going to talk about something we think is really important for massage therapists, how to build boundaries in your practice. which is something we think is really important. Yeah, and a lot of massage therapists that we work with really struggle with this because massage therapists have amazing hearts and they really want to give over so much but have a hard time kind of setting their own professional boundaries. So we're going to kind of start this dialogue. If it's something that you want to talk about, get on Facebook, get on Twitter, really involve yourself because I think this is a really great interactive um, topic. So, how are we going to build our boundaries? What are yeah. we going to do? So, I think first of all, it's about defining what you actually do as a massage yeah. therapist, and that's really important because all of us have lots of different roles that we take on in life. And I think because massage is very much about connecting with the heart mm -hmm. as well as connecting with the hands and aiming to get a result with our client and um, sometimes those boundaries can get a little blurred if you're not um, careful um, and in fact um, I have one funny story about uh, one of our teachers who um, their clients started bringing them their, their sewing and <laughs> <laughs> like because they made such a good connection with them they started bringing them their trousers to repair so um, you know we have to be very clear that you're there to offer massage um, and you're not although you might might be assisting your client with their recovery through your verbal interventions. You are not a counselor, for no. example. You're not a nutritionist unless you're trained in mm. that. You're not their best friend. You're not a lot of things no. that can sometimes get a bit So confused. I think the first thing that's really easy and difficult, but is easy to be able to define is timing. Yeah. So one of the big things you need to set up when you're doing boundaries is your timing. If you say your treatments are gonna be an hour treatment, yeah. they need to be an hour appointment, not an hour on the table. So mm. if you have a two o'clock appointment, you need to be thinking about how to get that client off the table by three o'clock. And one of the things that we really talk mm. about at Jing is that you are worth your time. So mm. although they're getting undressed or you're doing a consult, that is really your valuable time. So mm. we really believe you should charge for that. Um, also, and I mean, that timing thing is really important. So therapeutically, if you go and see a therapist, they are a talk therapist. They're very tight yes. on, their, yeah. on their timing because... And there are really good reasons for that around not not blurring, you know, what, what you're there for. And massage therapists need to be equally yeah. tight with their time. And also, um, if you don't do that, people can't rely on you. Yeah. So if you start to think, well, I'll just give them an extra 15 minutes or yeah. I could have showed them, I could have done all those other bits and pieces, and you go over five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 yeah. minutes then people start to feel quite anxious, even if they don't communicate that to you. And that might be a reason people don't come mm. back to mm. you, which is really different than what perhaps you might think. It's like, well, if I give them more, they'll be really happy. Yeah. So people have to leave on time, so they need to be able to um, believe that you're going to end that time so they can get onto their life, pick up their kids, go to wherever they know. Yeah. So I think timing is really important. And, and if you're going to change that time for any reason, you need to be really clear about it. So if, for example, your client was scheduled for a two o'clock appointment, you were maybe running late and you didn't start until 10 past two, yeah. but you know you're not going to finish till 10 past three, right. then you need to say to your client, really sorry, I'm running late, um, are you, are you okay? okay? Uh, yeah, obviously yeah, yeah. I want to give you a full time, so we'll be done at 10 past three. And then three. the same is, is true okay? when they're late. Yeah. So if they're late, yeah. I think we both really believe it's like, okay, see that clock right there? Don't pretend it's in a different yeah. realm. It's like, you're supposed to be here at two o'clock, it's 2.10, so mm. let's just be aware of that because we're gonna finish at three o'clock. And you say it at the beginning of yeah. your treatment. So while you're, it's not that while you're working, you start to think, oh, what am I, you know, what can I do here? So I think a clock is really important. And it also, you know, trains them as yeah. your client that you're no nonsense about that. So timing. Timing. Finance. So the other thing mm -hmm. is about um, charging. So what I think we started to talk about is charging mm -hmm. appropriately for your time, hour blocks or hour and 15 minutes. Yeah. Um, but also, 
I think massage therapists kind of start to go um and ah when people ask you how much you're charging. And I really, yeah. really feel like you should find a fixed fee that mm. works for you, um, that you can charge for your hour, no matter yeah. what type yeah. of treatment or technique you're using. Yeah. And that doesn't change. Our philosophy, yeah. you can correct me if you feel differently <laughs> about, our philosophy. about our philosophy, is that you should charge professionally for your time and look at what osteopaths or physiothera- physical therapists yeah. or acupuncturists are charging in your area and charge accordingly. And then if you feel like you want to do volunteer work, then go and volunteer. Yeah. So that means, you know, if you want to do some free work rather than things like sliding scale or, yeah. you know, playing around with your numbers. And, you know, we know people have got clients for 20 years, you know, you keep them yeah. at some low rate. But really about feeling like that's a professional rate that you're charging yeah. for. Uh, and I think very quickly before we wrap up, one thing that people get into a bit of a pickle with is when they are seeing friends, I think, yeah. or friends of friends, and they, they might know somebody. And what we would definitely advise on this is still be very clear around your boundaries because there's this idea of dual roles. So yeah. you might know somebody socially. If they're coming to see you as a client, they need to know that you're keeping to the same Yeah therapeutic boundaries don't give it away as you would with everybody else yeah. so they need to know exactly how much they're being charged yeah. they need to know their information is being kept confidential and i always say that to people if i'm seeing somebody i know socially um in this time and space everything mm-hmm. is confidential so if you see a friend make sure when they come to see you you treat them as a client mm-hmm. not as a friend great mm-hmm. and you're not going to do a great job about moving friends over into clients are you no. that's kind of hard Mm-hmm. So, um, if you want to do more about this work, Jing, the Institute, we offer a two-day marketing course. Really great to get together with what works in marketing and what doesn't. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, get back on Facebook and Twitter at Jing. Yeah. Um, enjoy the dialogue. Check us out on the website, www.jingmassage.com, or pick up some of our online courses and the DVD. Great. See you. See you.